This video is not a substitute for reading and understanding all the instruction manuals and warning labels supplied with the equipment, nor is it a substitute for reading and understanding the MSDS supplied by the material supplier. All right, before we put your respirator on, why don't we talk about what you're going to be doing next. Okay, so let's talk, we've, we've set the fluid up, so right. we've got the right stream coming out, we've got the right pressures. One thing we didn't talk about is the trigger travel. In other words, there's an adjustment back here that we can screw in and restrict the travel of the needle. Okay. Right? We don't necessarily want to set the gun up using that restriction. The proper setup for that is you trigger the gun and you start tweaking that adjustment. And as soon as you can feel that nozzle hitting the trigger and pushing it back, you want to back it off a half a turn. That's giving you the full adjustment open. Okay? All right. We don't want to use that adjustment to restrict the flow of the material. We should either do that by the regulator or by the tip selection. Okay, so if we use this, what's the downside? The downside is, is every time you have a different operator, he may adjust it just a little bit differently, okay. giving you inconsistent flow rates and could also potentially give you some odd wear on the tips. Okay, so we want to avoid doing that. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do since we've got our fluid set up is we want to set our atomizing arrow. Okay. Right? So the way we want to do that is we want to start with using 20 PSI of atomizing air. All okay. right. That's our starting point. And we're going to trigger the gun and we're going to use the top adjustment to adjust our pattern's height. So whatever our application uh, requires determines on how we set that for maybe a round pattern or up to a taller pattern. So we're going to set that pattern adjustment first. Okay. Okay. Once that's done, we're going to check our atomization error. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very quick pass and look at my droplet size. Okay. All right. If my atomization isn't where I want it, I'm going to increase back in my air regulator 5 PSI. Okay. So by looking at the droplet size, yep. gonna, if they're too big, that's right. Then you're going to increase your pressure. Exactly right. Okay. okay, and I'm going to keep going in that fashion until I stop seeing improvement in droplet sizes. Okay. Once I stop seeing improvement, I can now drop my pressure back 5 PSI because that gives me the best atomization okay. with the lowest air pressure. Okay, so why wouldn't you just crank it way up? Good question. If I can continue to crank it way up, basically what I'm doing is I have already achieved my best atomization, and all I'm doing is using that extra air to create a bigger fog, okay. dropping my transfer efficiency down. And that would be bad. And that would be bad. Okay. All right. Okay. This again is a compliant gun, so it's restricted to uh, to 29 psi as a maximum into the air inlet. Okay. All right. HVLP is a maximum of 10 psi at the air cap 10 psi or less okay all right now if we go to conventional air spray we can go upwards of 60 65 psi whatever it takes to atomize exactly right. right okay but in order to keep a compliant gun in that 30 to 35 percent transfer efficiency no more than 29 psi at the inlet of the gun okay okay sounds good all right so let's get after it okay let's do it Okay, so Mike, let's just talk about what you did here. Okay. First thing I saw you do is you set the shape of your pattern. Yeah, uh, actually the first thing I did was I set 20 PSI for atomizing. That's right, 20, 20 yep. PSI, then you sprayed it to see what yep. shape you had, yep. and you adjusted it until you got 
about the pattern I want pattern you want yep. and you can see when I was doing that that I was able to control that pattern a, a, a great deal I had a, a small mm -hmm. round pattern upwards of right. something that was probably you know 16 to 18 inches okay and you would adjust this based on what you were spraying what the application required exactly right how big yeah okay. yep. all right so then your first pass was this one right here that was the 20 psi yep okay so we started at 20 here and you weren't happy with the right. pattern yep so i increased it by 5 psi that's what we saw here okay okay and then the next thing I did was increase it by 5 PSI more, which was the bottom half of this, this whole thing okay. here. Right. What I didn't see is I did not see any improvement in atomization from this one okay. to this one. So, so then I dropped it back 5 PSI because I want to keep my atomizing air as low as possible right. while maintaining a good atomization quality. And that's where you needed to be. That's where I needed to be. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. One other thing, okay. um, when you set that atomizing air, you want to make sure the gun is triggered so you're under dynamic right. airflow conditions and not okay, static yeah, I airflow. noticed that you're triggering as you're as you're turning up your PSI exactly right, right. because okay. if you were to just set your pressure pull the trigger you wouldn't be at the right pressure exactly right because it's going to have a little bit of a pressure drop whatever this hose eats up right 